This is week 196 on HR2. Um, what happened that week was my breasts, um, they're slowly going up, um, in size. Um, let's see here, um, yeah. In the mornings, they seem like they're fuller than at night. For some reason, I'm not sure why. Um, but at times, like what happens, like they were going up. Then when I was up gesturing, they went up even more. Um, then after progesterone, I wasn't on it. They kind of gone down in size um so when i um take the progesterone again next month i'm going to um instead of what i did this last time i'm not gonna do like that but i'm going to um just take it normally um so yeah but I also noticed, um, with my breasts, um, it's like, this is a little, or like an adult topic type thing, but teenagers, it can happen to, um, and whatnot, but yeah, trans individuals who are transitioning in their teens, um, well, I should say when um I'm sexually aroused, I could say that's the better term. I could just use the word just plain and simple. My breasts because the hormones, especially after I take the hormones and yeah, and I'm sexually aroused and whatnot. It um all the hormones you um studied like best anatomy and whatnot when you're sexually aroused your breasts will go up in size because the hormones well when that happens it feels um my breasts feel more normal because when they're up in size like that they feel more normal but still feels off um because they're not that up to where they fully were when i had to go off all the prescriptions because i didn't because all that yeah situation um but now that I'm back on it, as that happens, I notice I feel better um, when they're up in size like that. Um, yeah. That's one big thing I've noticed. Um, they're not quite back up where they were, though. Um, the fullness of them. Um, what's what happened? They, my breasts were measuring 36 inches, got back on the hormones correctly, like the HRT correctly, it went down half an inch, like from 36 inches down to 35 and a half inches, then my breast went back up, um, went from 35 and a half inches to in between 35 and a half inches and 36 inches, right in the middle between, right there, then today when I measure them, they're measuring 36 inches, um, but I'm still fit, my breasts and whatnot, I still fit in a small 32C cup, um, yeah, because I know when I'm, like, the sexually aroused, it helps with getting the hormones flowing and whatnot, and taking showers and whatnot, having that warm water helps the breast grow a little bit, getting just the blood flowing, um, and getting all hormones going in there, that helped a little bit, so, they're not quite where I want them, or the fullness, yeah, I like them, but it's the fullness, I want them fuller, especially on tops right here, it's where I wanted the most, um, and this is what they look like, um, I'm wearing is a 32C cup. 
Yeah. I can see that. So, that's where they're at. Um, hopefully, they can still measure 36 inches going up in size. So I can eventually wear a D cup. Hopefully that can get there. But if not, then they don't. So um, I noticed other sexual things. Um, this is also an adult topic kind of a thing. What teenagers, it, it can happen to trans girls who are transitioning your teens. This can happen to. So with um, the genitalia down there, um, the skin um, on it has, for me, um, I've heard some other trans women this happened to, and the skin down there has gotten thin, um, the HRT will do that, um, yeah, so, um, if you're not careful, if it gets rubbed wrong or something, it can get sore easily. So, so the skin down there is like thin. It's one thing that has happened because when I went off, because when I first went on the HRT, it took over a year to get to that point. But to get to this, that point where the skin was thin, and um, yeah, then when I went off of it. It went back to how it was before it went thin, and now it's going back thin again, um, being back on them. And the other thing with the sperm, I could say, before I was on the HRT, um, there was a lot. Then it was like over, it was more than a year. It took more than a year of being on HRT, like the testosterone blockers. Then um, being put on the finesse dried. Then what happened was it slowly the sperm went count went down and kept going down and down until there was practically like nothing. Then when I went off the HRT, what has happened? Because as it was going down, um, seems like there was uh, how can I explain it? Because this can happen to you too. Um, like. Things like chunks of protein, I could say, is like looks kind of like an oval, kind of weird shape. Um, things like protein, or I'm not quite sure, but that was in with it, like the sperm and the liquid protein. It was like it looked like it was like an oval shape, kind of protein type thing, um, whatever it is. But that was in with it. Then as I kept going on with the HRT, as sperm went down, that went down with it, and that went away. Um, and there was no sperm. Then what was left was the liquid protein. Like, um, when females, um, should, lack of words, like, cum, I could say. It's the same liquid protein. Um, yeah. So there's that, but then when I went off the HRT, the sperm actually was coming back. Then, now that I'm back on it, it has decreased um, back on the HRT properly. It's decreased, but it's not fully to where it was before, how much was decreased. So, and the size of down there, the genitalia area has gone down in size, like, I should say, in, like, the muscle in length, um, when not, I should say, aroused, um, it's practically like two inches, it's like these three fingers are two inches, was so about like that, plus this finger, so it's about like, about like that, it's not, well, it helps when tucking and whatnot, when it goes down in size like that, 
Um, so that does help with tucking a lot. A lot. And pants fit better when tucked now. Being back on the HRT. And that's down size, so. And, um. And when being aroused, I could say it's. Doesn't. Like, it doesn't want to. Because the testosterone is being blocked. The blood flow. Um. Doesn't really want to be fully, like I could say, erected, and it doesn't, I should say, um, like, try to stay up and whatnot, because that does happen, it can happen, um, so, especially on the higher dosage of like spironolactone, and if you're on finasteride with it, so, that, um, Because it being off of it, everything's like normal now. But being on it, the HRT and whatnot, the um, it's like I should say halfway erected or just doesn't stay up the whole time and whatnot. Um, yeah. So that's what's been going on, and in the mornings. It's a big thing I've noticed um, because in the mornings you usually have more testosterone in the body. It's like in the morning, but I've noticed my genitalia, that issue I was having, being kind of, let's just say, like erected and yeah. It's not doing that, so that's another good thing I've noticed, so. Um, enough about down there um i noticed the fat pads right here have gone up like the fat then slightly has gone down but it's back to where it was almost fully to where it was before i went off the hrt and whatnot um and i also noticed my leg hair um especially the lower like the lower parts of my legs like the inner part has actually less hair and the outer part actually has less hair too but you can tell more on the inner parts of the legs so there's less leg hair so hopefully that keeps decreasing then i won't have to get laser hair removal done down there because that's why i want to do Eventually, one day, if it doesn't fully go away, um, I'm waiting for that, so, um, other than that, um, no other real significant changes has been really happening, um, Breast pain, a little bit of itchiness, mostly because I had a zit, like a little bit of acne through here, and it's healing, and that's where it's been itching, is in those spots. Um, so hopefully they keep growing and get up there. I noticed I've been sleeping better at night, being on the HRT, so that's a good thing. Um, the facial hair, it's still there. Um, it's I noticed this, it's through here, then all from up here going down there's spots where there's hair this is the hair um that wasn't fully grown in when i first started hrt my facial hair the facial hair was never fully grown in on me when i started laser hair removal then when i started hrt 
like a year later, it, almost a year later, yeah, it still um, wasn't fully grown in, and that hair is just, when I was off the HRT, then all that excess testosterone that's being used as much as possible, what's not being blocked until the prescriptions fully start doing its stuff. Um, it's caused that hair to come in, which is I'm not liking it. I call it my the nasties on my face because I really hate it. Um, I just right now don't have the money to get a touch up on it. It's gonna cost, I think it's like $45 for me for a touch up. And these things have changed um, in my underarms too. Um, I've noticed the hair growth is slower. And the hair on my face is, I should say, like stubbly. Um, like you know, when you first go through puberty and that hair is coming in, it's all stubbly but soft and not um, like a course, it's like that, um, but hopefully I can get a touch up on that soon, so yeah, um, I've been a lot comfortable with myself, um, of who I am as a person and and whatnot with being on HRT. Um, the other day though I did get a little dysphoric so it was Sunday I believe it was Sunday after the title of this video um yeah got dysphoric so a little bit down Part of it's the hormones, time of the month, hormonally, and the other thing was I wasn't, haven't taken the vitamin D3 in a while, so that could be affecting that too, so, um, yeah, and the other th thing that when called the insurance company and the doctor and whatnot so we can get the issue resolved with the other 60 like the cause how my estradiol is supposed to be four milligrams one tablet twice a day um so if the other four would get covered then being on the new dosage we're supposed to be three tablets a day, like six milligrams. Well, the doctor, they, they did what they could do and it's because the insurance I'm on, they only cover 30. So the rest of the estradiol I have to pay out of pocket, um, which is, it's not that much. And the doctor just said, stay on the two milligrams like the four milligrams and when I see her in a year um, if it needs to go up by then then she'll raise it by then but so I never started that dosage so I don't know if that's going to ever help my breast get up in size or not so I have to pay for that extra 30 pills of the estradiol, which is it's like an extra five dollars, which is it's not that bad. Now it's in that Walmart, and that Walgreens, just for like thirty pills, it's like almost twenty dollars. So it's like they, I just say Walgreens overcharges. So and plus the insurance plan I'm on, they don't take it. So I'm at Walmart, and it's a lot cheaper. And their customer service is a lot better. 
and they actually get it filled on time when they say it's going to be filled. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I'm just going to have to be taking four milligrams. So, yeah. So, right now, my dosage of estradiol is four milligrams, one tablet in the twice a day and spironolactone is 200 milligrams one it's like a 100 milligram tablet twice a day so nestor also a milligram tablet twice a day so i usually take those two together and the finasteride is a five milligram tablet one fourth of that so I usually take a spironolactone, an estradiol, and a finasteride in the morning. And at night, I take the estradiol and the um, spironolactone, about like 12 hours apart, which is it's usually in the evening, like in the morning, then in the evening. Um, then when it's the time of month, like the way the progesterone is supposed to be, it's like medroxy progesterone is dosed. You take it like your cycle. So when you have to know your own body to figure that out. But I usually take it um, depending on the month. If the month has 31 days, it'll be the last day of the month. I start taking it the 10 days and if there's only 30 days I usually start on the first of the month like that so judging by my body and what it does and yeah so that's how I've been taking the HRT and when taking the progesterone at the full dose, it does help with the breast growth, being up in size. So when you do go off of it for the rest of the month, the breasts are mostly up in size more. And then towards the end of the month, they will be down in size a little bit. So that's why I'm going to start taking the prescription correctly to help with that. And it does really help. Um, see other than that I'm still doing the best I can with the situation um, and this is as of today this video um, this is what my body actually looks like now um, let's do this
Now my waist is 27 inches. So I think part of the weight, now part of it is breasts, like the tissue and fat and whatnot. That's part of the where some of the weight has come from, but not much. So and yeah. And I haven't noticed any other body changes, um, except what I mentioned. So, um, yeah. So, that's what's been going on with being back on the HRT and how it's been going. I still, um, having thoughts of trying to find a girlfriend here and there trying to figure out what to do about that um and how I was saying the thoughts of how I really wanted to get pregnant and whatnot that's not as relevant the feelings right now like they were I'm not sure why but I'm not sure exactly why, but I still want a baby girl of my own. The feeling's not as bad as it was, but I still really want a girlfriend. And the girlfriend I want, I want her to have red hair, it's like a natural redhead. That's what I'm attracted to. Um, and the weird thing is, in some way, dreams I've been having like dreams where this girl is in my dream and it could be the person that's supposed to be my someone well, I'm not sure but she has red hair it's like the exact person that I'd be attracted to it's a person like that's been in my dream and I'm not sure why I'm having dreams like that but where there's a girl that's a redhead around my age and someone I'm attracted to and whatnot and yeah and one of my dreams I, I can't remember exactly what the dream was about but I know that we were together in a relationship it's like a new relationship and whatnot it was a weird dream and she had red hair like that dark red hair and she was around my age and it was like when I woke up like that was a weird dream. It's like this person keeps ending up in my dream. I wonder if that's who this person's supposed to be, my someone. Because I know dreams like that can happen. And a lot of my dreams, um, I'd say like a lot of my dreams have actually happened exactly as my dream. Like when I've been dreaming and whatnot, you know, I wake up in the morning, then. Sometimes I don't remember it. Then when the incident actually happens, I was like, whoa. It just like blows over my head. It was like, whoa, and I don't remember that act that was in my dream. And it's like things like that happen to me constantly. So yeah. It's like the last one. Um, when I went to see my doctor, I was in the waiting area then I was like wait a minute this was in my dream the whole entire experience the whole details of everything I dreamt that then actually happened and as I was leaving the place I was like this is weird it's like deja vu but it was in my dream and I know it was in my dream so things like that happen a lot so this person that keeps ending up in my dream she could be the one I won't know until it happens so yeah well, other than that, until next time, the next video, comment, rate, and subscribe, and click the links down there, the link to my blog, if you never checked out my blog, I haven't done the blog yet, but I'm going to do it soon, um, yeah, be down there, I have one planned, I know, some people will like, um, I just have to get around to doing it, so, yeah. 
other than that, I just want to say, just be happy to be you and be yourself.